Hello, 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 my wonderful art people. How are you today? I am so good. <laughs> yes, more changes. <laughs> so I really had fun with the everyday art exercises. Um, but uh, it was like it was a good job. <laughs> and um, so things are changing and morphing because I'm a tweaker. And I always tweak for the best outcome. So the name Everyday Art Exercise kind of suggests daily videos. And I can't do a video a day, uh, but I still want to do lots of videos a week. I just don't want the anxiety of every day. Second, I want to do all kinds of art. Different art supplies, different types of art, like nature journaling and art journals. And who knows what? So, uh, and, and, even, and even for you to think that you would have to keep up every day <laughs> to, to do these videos every day, it's just, it's just too much anxiety. And we do art because we love it. We love the way it feels. We love the way our hands are with supplies and drawing and painting. We love the outcome of what we have. So I, I didn't want this, um, this everyday thing, it, it kind of bugged me. So, um, uh, so I'm changing everyday art exercise to art with Cindy. And these will be real time. Every once in a while I may throw in a time lapse of video, but um, they'll mainly be um, real time. And this way we could do a real time video in 30 minutes or an hour, a single object or a landscape or a botanical or a detailed um, painting or something. Um, and one week there might be four videos and, and, and one week maybe only one video. And this way, um, you won't feel the pressure that you have to do every single video too. You could just go into um, the Art with Cindy <laughs> playlist and just play with whatever you want. Because I'm going to move all of my videos. I, I think I'll try to add all the videos in there too. Or maybe I'll just start with what we're, what, what we're starting now and things like that. So um, that being said, today we're going to do a perpetual art journal entry because I took Jack's on a walk in this park that has so much botanical flora that I, I, that I need to collect more for my nature journals. And I saw this most unusual flower. I'm gonna put the picture in right here. It's a little complicated, isn't it? But when you're nature journaling, you don't really have to be complicated. I can just do, and I'll show you how I'm going to uncomplicate this for me because I am not doing all of that. But isn't that the coolest? Um, so let's get started. Uh, here is my, um, this is my nature journal supplies. I, I kind of keep them separate because this way I can grab them, go in the car and go somewhere if I want to do nature journaling plain air or in you know in the area and this is just basically microns um all my teeny tiny <laughs> all my good really and these are all really good teeny tiny is my raphael's uh this is a raphael kalinsky and this one this teeny tiny one is also a oh windsor newton cotman my microns i think i have um a sepia Plus I have all those other sepias. I have a sepia, I have a couple O3s, and the gray. This is uh, also an O3. I like really, yeah, uh, I like the thins. These are my favorite watercolors, I believe. You can see my shadow violet, violet, sienna, Payne's gray, moon glow. Uh, I throw that in there just in case. And then, you know, my favorite um, black grape pencils. These are really great too. Prismacolor Black Grape. Great for nature journaling and stuff like that. Shading stuff like that. So that's that for there. And then here is what we're going to do is I have two nature journals. I have a regular nature journal uh, which actually is um, I think it's in my car right now where I just do all kinds of nature journaling. Um, and I have done um, a tour of my nature journals and there's a video out there and, and there's a playlist um, called nature journal so this video will go under two playlists nature journal and art with cindy 
But let me just, you know, I'm just going to tell you real quick what a perpetual nature journal is. So this, I started in 2022. I learned this from Laura Gastinger. She is like the most wonderful botanical illustrator I've ever seen. Her work is amazing. She's on Instagram. Um, find her. But she's the one that um, introduced us to perpetual nature journals. And what you do is you just have... Um, the dates and you have like eat for, for the two pages you have like a range of dates like February 26 through 28 and then you put um, so that every February 26 if I happen to be doing something that year put it down so this one I actually did this year crown conch um, found by the dock in our apartment blah 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 but see that's what we do so um, and then you can do this for several years and fill it up and i have not really done that yet <laughs> but i will so we are in august and as you can see uh, i need to really start getting into this and doing more so where is august august 3rd here we are august 1 through 3. let me make sure this is here we and i'm going to be doing ink tents here I'm just gonna because of uh, you seeing the colors there. I am not, and I'm gonna show you. I am not doing this whole thing as a painting. I'm doing it as as nature drawing. So let me show you this, um, how we're, we're gonna do this. So this is um, a passion purple passion flower. I looked it up. I took a picture. I took a picture of this at the park, and this is my photo and. I like to do with micron, uh, as you know. So um, let's just start. When I, I'm trying not to make it super, super big. This erase erasure is kind of bothering me. Let me just erase this really good. I have the dates and pencil for some reason. And let's see. So let's go ahead and draw this in. This is really kind of real. I just want to make sure you can see as well. So. Um, let's just do that little, you see this little green thing? That is the passion fruit starting. <laughs> Isn't that so cool looking? And then it's got all these little tendril thingies. Of course, I don't know. When you watch Laura Gastinger, she knows all, well, she's a botanical illustrator. She's fantastic. She knows the words. She knows what, what all of these things are. I'm not even going to begin to know because if I say the wrong thing. Um, let's see. And there's this another thing coming out. I just want to. Oh, alrighty, right on time. Snoring. <laughs> Shih tzu. <laughs> I'm not going to be exact as well. So here, there's. It looks like these these things have like a. I don't want to. I'm gonna. What if it's, uh, ew, talk, Cindy. <laughs> then there's this. I'm not even gonna say what it is because I don't know what it is. <laughs> and there's the circular. I should have. I mean, I, I guess I could have really looked it up but oh they have these so these like thingies these tendril thingies are just so cool and I'm not gonna do every single uh, every single one but I do want to give that illusion of them oops that was too thin thick oh because i want to do let's see let's do the petal underneath so we can, and then we'll do some more of these so the petals are white which is since they are white it's really hard to paint white <laughs> so i'll show you what we do here i might put i might use gray to just show the shadow of the white. It's so cool looking. When I saw this, of course, you know, when you're walking and you see a really 
cool looking flower like this. You take all these pictures and then once you look at it, it's like, how in the heck? <laughs> so all these tendril thingies come out. So cool. Trying to give it that impression of because it goes around back there. So we'll do it that way and let's just do the vine. And these vines have these cool little tendrils. Let me see if I can even draw Ooh, one of these tendrils. Oh, heck. Heck, heck, heck. And then it goes another loop. Loop to loop. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, goes, it goes over all right we'll just let it go and the vine the vine has those little hairs um i'm not gonna do the i'm just gonna do uh let's just get that leaf in real i'm just gonna do a really small one like that because i don't want to take away from the flower because yeah yeah <laughs> all right so that's kind of cool looking so let's just paint in just a few things so this is why i like ink tents because we just which one do i want i'll just do Let's take this one. Um, let's get that Payne's Gray. I just want to do, because we want a really, really light gray to show these, to just give you the idea that these are white flowers. Or white petals. Just a few, some kind of illusion. It's, it's just you know shadows and and tricking the eye. <laughs> so let's see now. Let's get me my. Let me get the teeny tiny one, because we just want to do a few of these violet tendrils here. And. Um, Just to give you, and you notice, did you notice in the flower how the violet, the tendrils are violet, but and then in the middle, they're a little bit more magenta. Thank goodness we have some fuchsia. And you notice how I'm just doing a, uh, not really painting it in. So here's some fuchsia. Throw in some fuchsia. And I get more fuchsia in the middle. And this is fuchsia. But I, I do it, I wanna do it messy because I don't want it like filled in. Because we're not filling it in, we're just we're just tricking the eye. Oh, I wonder if I should do that with um, the tendrils. I could do that. This way we could have more tendrils if I get the violet. And 
just do a few more like that. See how we trick the eye? Just throwing them in, throwing them in. Okay, so then I just want to get just a little bit darker with the fuchsia here. And then uh, I'm going to use this Ionian green to do this. The seed pod, but it's more like a. Let me throw. Let me throw in some of this. What is this? Lemon yellow. Just teeny, teeny, teeny pit pieces of it. There we go. And then uh, this red oxide. Just give it just to do the vine. And see how this thing was, uh, see, I don't want to color everything in. This is a little bit of a Ionian green for the, the leaf. Yeah, this is really a compli. I mean, if you really look at this thing, you see how the um, when it goes from fuchsia to the and that little piece of white and the purple. Look at how complicated that looks, but it looks so pretty. But I won't even begin <laughs> to. I wouldn't even begin to. I'm just doing it that way. Maybe it's a little bit more green in here. I don't know. Now those had little hairs. So let's put the hairs in with the um, micron. I could use. There we go. So that's the flower so far. Um, because there's so many little um tendrils or those teeny tiny purple petals if this was a different kind of a flower i would use i would do um i would shade out outside here what do they call that um it'll come to me and if it doesn't i'll put it in the, whatever so what we do is um this is I'll do it here. This is part of the art. Is what what your the information in Carnata. Commonly known as Purple passion flower. A fast growing perennial perennial vine with climbing. Or trailing stems. That's why I put the. Let's see, that looks kind of. I want them to look like they belong together. can be smooth 
long and trailing, possessing many tendrils. Did I just foreground with climbing or trailing stems? Yeah, I that was a little that was a little redundant, but um flower normally begins to bloom in July. Now notice how I'm trying to keep this area because I might do something in the middle here or I might have something come over here because we use all pieces of so this will be for several years. Oh, so let's see. That's another thing. Um, Bloom in July. I don't want to mess this up. So, hope it's dry. So I'm going to put today is... Um, oh my goodness! I just noticed. This is August 3rd. I meant to put this for September 3rd. I can't believe I did this. Uh, let's do nine, three, twenty-four, and I'm gonna put. Oops. <laughs> I'm not in September yet. Oh well. Um, and then we'll put Gulfport, New York. I can't even write. Gulfport, New York. Gulfport, Florida. <laughs> God. Oh, boy, did I mess up. Boy, did I mess up big. <laughs> but that being said, um, let's just... Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, the fleshy fruit. The fleshy fruit is oval yellowish berry uh, da, 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 about the size of an egg an egg and then like you could put like I could put like a little square here and and draw the, the fruit, which I should have done, but I, I don't have a picture of it, so I don't know. Uh, plant has been used. Oh, as an herbal medicine. Okay. So that's that. I can't believe I messed up the date. <laughs> but this is what I would do for Nature Journal. And I'll just go through, let's see, February. That's 2023. Uh, 24. 23. I know I started this in 22. Probably over here there's some here's some 2022 yep October this is uh, Lockport New York when I was living in New York so yeah kind of give you an idea sometimes I'll put the um the size things like that the mulberry black walnut you know ginkgo so this is it this is uh, my nature journal for today. Wrong date. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I better go take my vitamins. Thank you for being here. So um, I finished another sketchbook. So I'll be doing a sketchbook tour video of maybe three of my sketchbooks. So look for that coming up soon, too. And um, look for Art with Cindy. <laughs> the new name change, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.